Hi, my name is Mark and I teach economics. In this video, we're going to talk about the Phillips curve. And we're going to define the Phillips curve. I'm going to show you how to draw the Phillips curve and identify three points on the Phillips curve for your exam or test. So the Phillips curve defined is the inverse relationship between unemployment and inflation. So when inflation is high, unemployment is low. When unemployment is high, inflation is low. It's an economic concept, doesn't always hold. So that's the first point. That's the definition of the Phillips curve. If you take a look at the Phillips curve, you have two Phillips curves. You have a long run Phillips curve and a short run Phillips curve. The long run Phillips curve is vertical. The short run Phillips curve goes downwards, is downward sloping. And the long run Phillips curve always gravitates towards this natural rate of unemployment. There's debate of what it should be. CBO says it's 5.2%. That's where the economy is minus the frictional and structural unemployment. So, well, including the st structural and frictional unemployment minus the cyclical unemployment. The inflation rate, some people say the natural rate of inflation is 2%. Now, that, that's a, no really a natural rate of inflation, but it's usually a target that the Fed uh, tries to go for. We'll say 2% in this country. And when you have full employment and you have a natural rate of unemployment, then you're at equilibrium. And this is where the long run Phillips curve settles. Now, at the top, you have an inflationary gap. That's the point where you have inflation, but you have low unemployment, low unemployment and high inflation. So you have to identify that point on a graph. Where is the inflationary gap? That's on the short run Phillips curve. And the, on the other side, towards the bottom, is the recessionary gap. That's high unemployment and low inflation. So you have three points on the Phillips curve, inflationary gap, full employment, and recessionary gap. On an exam or a test, you need to identify where these three points are. Now let's talk a little bit more about this. The Phillips curve in the short run, it should always naturally start to gravitate back to the long run. The Federal Reserve, through various policies or through various government stimuli, it tries to influence this. So if we're stuck in a uh, recessionary gap, it tries to, let's say, start the printing presses, stimulate it, uh, the economy in a monetary way, and it will perhaps bring us out of this into full employment. Now there's a problem with that. People have expectations and rational expectations. So there's a question whether this inflationary uh, gap can be filled or, or fixed or this recessionary gap can be fixed, and if these policy tools are really active. So let's go back to the history of this. Uh, William Phillips in 1958 wrote a paper and he noted just simply a correlation. This is, he's not saying a policy prescription, it was just a correlation between inflation and unemployment. And uh, it was Milton Friedman who really popularized this idea. There, there were others, of course. It was Irving Fisher that discussed this type of thing. But F Friedman really uh, popularized the idea that policy should not be used. Government should not turn the dials and engineer the economy because eventually people have these expectations and even rational expectations later on. People develop this idea that would always drift it back to the natural rate of unemployment no matter what. And the economy, if you meddle with it, it can only make it worse. So the idea is, is this even a relevant idea? And because we had in the 1970s, we had stagflation. We had high unemployment and high inflation. It was caused by mostly structural and supply side shocks from the oil crisis. And look at us today. Well, depending on when you're viewing this, uh, post-2008 crisis, Right now, we have very low inflation and very low unemployment, historic. And again, that could be caused by perhaps, uh, maybe it was monetary policy and it's a temporary 
flux or it's some supply side economics going on with uh, advantages gained through techno technological uh, and productivity increases. That's a different story. But what is relevant for the Phillips curve is this. There is a significant, the significance of the uh, Phillips curve is there's a trade-off between <clears throat> inflation and unemployment and it's only applicable in the short run. Inflationary policies will not decrease unemployment primarily because of expectations. So that's what you should understand, this inverse relationship that the short-term policies are very short-term or may not even be effective, depending on your point of view. So that's the Phillips curve. You can see the graph. You can see how you can draw the graph. It's a pretty straightforward vertical line for the long run and a downward sloping for the short run with inflation being on the y-axis and unemployment being on the horizontal x-axis. Thank you very much.